It's been a long time coming, but welcome to the very first Andrew Plays of 2021. As always, I am your host, Andrew Ambrose, and I hope you're having a fantastic day. And today is a particularly fantastic day, at least for me, and hopefully some of you out there, because today is a snow day. I have no school today, even though it's a Monday, because of all the snow outside. Started yesterday with a lot of snow, but it really picked up today. And then you can still hear snow clinking against my window pane in my bedroom. And, well, I've been meaning to make an Andrew Plays like the moment the year started, but I didn't get around to it until now, which is February 1st. But here we are, 1st of 2021. And since it's a snow day, I feel it'd be best that for today's episode, I would take a look at a classic Atari VCS game from 1983, Frostbite, from Activision, back when Activision didn't suck, back when Activision was one of the top quality um, publishers of games for home consoles back in the day. They were the very first third-party developer and publisher and they made some fantastic games for the Atari um, VCS as well as the Intellivision and a few other, and the ColecoVision and a few other consoles. But they mainly thrived on the Atari VCS um, with such amazing games as Frostbite, but also with Enduro and Stampede and Skiing and Ice Hockey and David Crane's amazing Pitfall and Pitfall 2 The Lost Caverns. But yeah, today we'll be taking a look at one of Activision's many classics. In this case, it's Frostbite. Programmed by Steve Cartwright. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's, a, it's an arcade-style game with some influence from Frogger, possibly a little bit more from q as well. And it's just an addicting game. It's pretty challenging, but it's a lot of fun, and that's the most important thing. So... Let's get started, shall we? I have an NES controller hooked up to my computer with a USB adapter, and we're going to get started with this classic from the from the early 80s. Okay. In this game, you play as a little Eskimo guy, and what you're trying to do is hopping across these sheets of ice in order to build up blocks of an igloo so that you can survive the freezing winter weather. And you've got to be careful to watch out for various obstacles that get in your way, like these birds and various other things. And once you build your igloo, you got to get inside. And of course, you have to watch for the temperature. It's in Fahrenheit, of course. And once it reaches zero Fahrenheit, you lose a life. You can also lose a life from falling in the freezing cold winter water. As we all know, falling in water will freeze your body and kill you. I'm sure we've all seen that thing from Titanic. <coughs> and uh, you can also eat these green fish that show up along the way for extra points. Oh, well, look, the igloo's built. Time to get back there. Uh-oh. Ah. You know, I should I should have waited. But yeah, now it's built. Now we can run inside. Beautiful. All right. Ooh, silly me. You gotta be careful of those things that try to push you in, because you can't move when they do. Uh, yeah, 3,590. 3, uh, not that, not that good of a score, at least I don't think it is. But yeah, let's, let's try it again.
Gotta be careful. Gotta be quick. Can't let the temperature kill you. Freeze your little Eskimo bones. Uh-oh, the temperature's gone. Ah, uh, there we go. You know, I just realized something. It'd make more... It'd be more... It'd be more sensible to play a game themed around something hot while it's cold outside rather than play a game about something cold while being in a cold environment right now. But you know what? Screw it. I did it in de December and it won't stop me from doing it again in February. Look at the delicious points. I keep, I keep getting greedy. I keep forgetting that I can't fall between them. It's not that simple. Oh, yeah. Uh, you hit, if you hit the button on the controller, you can change the flow of the bricks. But that'll take away a piece of your igloo, so you have to be careful with how you use it. Can't believe I can't believe I forgot that. But yeah, now the igloo is built. Now we can safely cross and get inside before I freeze. Now we have a polar bear, and he looks hungry, as hungry as an eight-bit polar bear can be. And I'm dead. But yeah, that was a better score. I made an improvement. 4,880. Let's try it again. Ah, uh, damn it. Come on. Yeah, there we go. And now we just wait. And... Boom. Yeah, it's like Qbert meets Frogger set in an ice setting. And I died. Ah, uh, there we go. Now the ice, the igloo is built. I almost said ice glue. Fishies for them extra points. Though I'm, I, ah, I mis I mistimed it. Oh, there we go. It was built. Now we can run in safely. Tricky one. It's a tricky little guys. Oh, oh yeah, you can change the. Oh yeah, I forgot you can change directions while hopping. That's cool. Ah, nuts. But hey, at least I get to make it at the cost of a, of a life. But hey, I can only do so much. I'm not. It's, this isn't my best game. I'm, I'm better at a few other Activision titles, but this one is a real challenge. A real doozy. That polar bear's hungering. Now, I don't I don't know if you can touch the polar bear, but I'm not I'm not gonna attempt to do that because I don't know if he'll Oh okay, so if you touch the polar bear here he'll scare you away. I, I guess that makes sense. Now I'm getting better at this game. Now I'm learning the ropes. Oh, now it's getting dark. That means it's getting colder out. Ah! Oh, colder outside. 
should have hit the button before that crab touched me and pushed me into the freezing water. Let's try it again. Yeah, that was a better time. 8,080, 8, I think that was. Ah. Rookie mistake. Captain N, the game master. Yeah, that show is terrible. Not even just because of the terrible... The, the character designs were somewhat terrible. Eh, bad writing. Just the writing was bad. With the character designs... I, I've heard that they had to make them different from the games because of, like, they didn't want to make the show seem like an advertisement, even though it obviously was. But... They could have at least made them look good and not look like absolute... Well, some of them are fine, but others are, like, terrible. Like, they look cringe-inducing. And I don't want to sound like one of those guys that put, use, constantly uses the word cringe a lot, but that's genuinely how I feel. It makes me... It makes me cringe. Like, I'm, I'm being sincere about that with the Captain N designs. It could it could have been a it could have been good. It, the idea is awesome. A crossover between multiple different video games. A kid who plays games gets sucked into the world of the games and he helps out the characters fight the bad guys. That that's awesome. Uh but yeah, it didn't all go to plan. But a lot of people liked it and I can respect that. And if it weren't for Captain N, we wouldn't have the amazing Captain S from PPC Productions for for all you internet 2007 users. I wasn't one. I was only three, so I wouldn't have known about it back then. But for all you who remember it from the old days of YouTube, yeah, Captain S, man. Friggin' awesome. You can actually, the, the, the Captain S soundtrack actually got put on Spotify, which is really cool. You didn't. You wouldn't think that an obscure internet show from 2007 would. Well, it did have a soundtrack release, but you wouldn't think that that soundtrack would end up on Spotify of all things. But there you go. Can't touch those birds at all. Those sons of bitches will drag you into the water. They're like they're like those Kappa enemies from Pocky and Rocky. I've never played it, but I've seen a review of it, and they'll those the Kappa enemies like they're 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 enemy Kappas in that game, and they will drag you into the water and kill you. comes the bear. Like the bears, he's bad news. Can't let can't let that bear scare you away. You gotta you gotta build that eagle. You gotta make sure you don't get your yourself frozen in the water. You gotta survive. Just like the band, Survivor. Come on. Yes! Imagine, I, I don't know if anyone's done this, I'm sure no one has, but imagine if there was a hack of this game that converts the degrees from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Like, that'd be, that'd be pretty interesting, you know, because the degrees would have to go down at a slow, at a, the, the rate of which they would go down would be different than this, because, of course, the intervals of Celsius and Fahrenheit are different. 
it's 5 Celsius for every 9 Fahrenheit plus 32 extra degrees for Fahrenheit. So it's like, it'd be very, it'd be pretty complicated. But it's an interesting idea at that, you know. I, I, I'd like to see that. That'd be a cool idea for a ROM hack. But, yeah, I think that's going to do it for today's episode of Andrew Plays. Best score, about 80,000. I mean, no, 8,000, not 80. What the hell am I talking about? I don't even know if that's possible in this game. But, yeah, that's Frostbite, an Activision classic. It's hard as balls, but it's pretty fun. And if you're a fan of Frogger or Qbert or both, like me, You'll definitely get a kick out of this one. I don't have the cartridge of this, but I'm surprised I don't, but I would try to get it because it's a good game. And it's good for if you if it's too hot and you wanna feel cold or if you if it's really cold and you wanna get into the into the mood, into the spirit, and you don't feel like playing Ice Climber, you can play Frostbite. So uh yeah, that's going to do it for today's episode of Andrew Plays. I hope you enjoyed it as always. Um, and anyways, like always, I'm Andrew Ambrose, and I'll catch you later. Take care, guys.